Hey YouTube. So this is problem number 40 from chapter 4 from the section on uh, mesh width dependent sources. So let's describe the circuit. We have two independent uh, voltage sources, uh, 30 volts here and 30 volts here. We have one dependent voltage source, 53I delta. So this is a current control dependent voltage source and its value is controlled by this I delta, which is the um, current that goes through the 20 ohm resistor. So the rest of the values for this circuit is 3, 5, 20, 7, and 2. We're going to use the mesh method to solve this problem. And um, although I actually think the node voltage would have been easier, to tell you the truth, because we have a super node here, and so we could have written an equation here, an equation here. But this, we're studying the section on the mesh method, so that's what we're going to use. So a mesh is um, a connection of circuit elements where the first point ends with the last point is the same place. So if we start, if we were to outline this circuit element, it starts here, goes here, then here, then here, and it ends where it starts. So it makes a circle, or it makes a closed loop. That's a mesh, and inside that mesh, there's no other mesh. That's, um, so we can look at this and identify three meshes. So this is one mesh, two mesh, and three meshes. So let's go ahead and um, label the currents that are going through that. This mesh current, I'm going to call IA. I'm going to call that IB, and I'm going to call that IC. And I just want to make sure I label them the same so that I can cross-check my answer. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have three equations, but we have four unknowns. The fourth unknown is I delta. So the fourth equation is going to come from the constraint equation for I delta. Okay, so let's first start with mesh at IA. This current, this is a positive current. I've defined it to be in the counter, in the clockwise direction. So I have positive IA, and the first terminal it comes into is a negative terminal. That tells me this is negative 30. Negative 30. And the next voltage drop, and just a reminder, you guys, um, uh, the mesh method uses um, Kirchhoff's voltage law, which says that the, voltage, the sum of the voltage drops in a closed mesh is zero. And remember, uh, voltage is current times resistance. So the voltage drop across that 3 ohm resistor is going to be 3 times the net current of IA minus IB. The next voltage drop is across the 20 ohm resistor, and that has net current of IA minus IC. And then the final voltage drop is across the 7 ohm resistor, so that's going to be 7 IA is equal to 0. Our second set of equations is going to come from the mesh at IB. The first voltage drop is going to be across the 3 ohm resistor, so that's going to be 3 times the net current of IB minus IA. And then across the, well this is a voltage itself. So, Here's how you can make a mistake if you're in a real rush and you don't pay attention. You would say, oh, okay, so this is going to be IB times 53I I delta. Well, think about what that gives you. You'd have current times voltage, and current times voltage is power. And power plus voltage is completely nonsensical. It makes no sense at all. Um, so then you would have... Um, cost yourself some points by being an autopilot and just taking every single element and multiplying it by, um, by a current. So be really cognizant of what you're doing. What we're doing is we're summing the voltage drops across um, the circuit element. We have positive um, current and the first terminal that it encounters is a positive terminal. That tells me that this is going to be a positive 53 I delta. And then the last voltage drop is the one across the, um, the 5 ohm resistor. So that's going to be 5 times a net current of IB minus IC. And all that has to equal 0. Now, mesh at IC, we're going to start at the 20 ohm resistor. So 20 times a net current of IC minus IA. 
And then the next voltage drop is across the 5 ohm resistor, so that would be 5 with a net current of IC minus IB. And the next, the next voltage we encounter is um, this positive current. The first terminal it encounters is the minus, the negative terminal. So that tells me this is minus 30. And then the final voltage drop is across the 2 ohm resistor, which is just 2IC. All that is equal to 0. We have three equations and four unknowns. So our final equation is going to come from the definition of I delta itself. So this is the direction of the voltage drop. Um, and IA is entering the, the uh, positive terminal. So that's how I know that it's going to be positive IA. IC is entering the negative terminal of the voltage drop. So that's how I know that IC is going to be minus IC. And that's how I know I delta is IA minus IC. We're going to put everything on one side so that we have IA minus IC minus I delta is equal to zero. That's going to be one of my equations here. IA minus IC minus I delta is equal to zero. Now we're going to put all that information in a matrix and let our calculator do the hard work. So we have four unknowns, IA, IB, IC, and I delta. And then we have some constants. So from our mesh at IA equation, we have three for the coefficients for IA. We've got three plus 20 plus seven, that's going to be 30. And for our IB coefficients, we have negative three. I see we have a negative 20, and for no occurrences of I delta, and for our constants, we have 30. Our second set of equations we've got for um, IA, we have a negative 3 coefficient, for IB, we have 3 and 5, which is 8. For IC, we've got negative 5. And then for I delta, we have 53. And for constants, we have 0. Our third equation is um, for mesh at IC. So we have negative 20 coefficient for IA. For IB, we have negative 5. For IC, we have 20 plus 5, which is 25, plus 2, which is 27. We have no I deltas in that one. And then for that 30, we'll go on the other side as positive 30. And for our last equation, we have 1 coefficient for IA, 0 for IB, negative 1 for IC, and negative 1 for I delta, and 0 for constant. Now we have a matrix that we can enter into our um, simultaneous equation solver. We have four equations and four unknowns, so 30, negative 3, negative 20, 0, 30, negative 3, 8, negative 5, 53, and 0, negative 20, negative 5, 27, 0, and 30. 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1, and 0. Solve. And double check. Okay, so that is also what I got the first time around. So this is what you should have gotten from your simultaneous equation solver. You should have got IA is equal to 52 amps. IB is equal to 110 amps. That's a lot of amps. IC is equal to 60 amps. And I delta is equal to negative 8 amps. So power, of course, is voltage times. Um, uh, power, when you have a voltage, is P is equal to VI. So the V is going to be the value of the 53 
I delta voltage source, that's the power, and then times the current going through it. And the current going through it, if you go back to your schematic, is IB. Now, look back at your schematic. I have IB, which is the positive current going through the positive terminal. That tells me the valve the sign of the voltage will be positive. So, um, so positive, and the value of the voltage is 53 times I delta. So positive 53, I delta is negative 8, and IB is 110 amps. Now we just multiply them all together. So we're going to go 53 times negative 8 times 110. And so the power then is equal to um, negative 46,640 watts. So just about negative 46, so negative 46.6 kilowatts. So just about, um, so that dependent voltage source is generating power of approximately 47 kilowatts. Um, and that is the answer to that problem. Don't forget to like the Facebook link for this solution if it helped you so that your friends can find us. Thanks.